So this is a Creality Ender 5 Plus, which I recently purchased second hand. And the main reason I bought this is because it has a much bigger build plate than my trusty Ender 5 Pro. And hopefully it will come in useful for some future projects that I've got planned. Now it appears that this model here is pretty stock. So what we're gonna do with this is do some upgrades. Uh, the obvious things that people usually upgrade is the, the Bowden tube here to use a proper sort of low friction Capricorn tubing on here and also the uh, extruder is using this uh, plastic part here so I'm going to look to upgrade that to a metal one. The other thing this has is a non-silent 8-bit board so when this thing is actually running it's, it's extremely loud as the stepper motors are making a noise so what we're going to see if we can do on here as well is upgrade this to a 32-bit board. But before we can get onto all of that I'm going to strip this down and give it all a good clean and then see if it needs any other bits replacing. So yeah, I'm gonna get on with that and come back when it's done. Okay, so I've now stripped down and cleaned the machine and ordered some parts which have now arrived that I can fit back onto the machine. So firstly, we have the, the new Bowden tube, which is a Capricorn tube, low friction. And uh, this also comes with some new bed springs, which I think are slightly longer than the originals and also got the metal extruder that's going to go in and hopefully be a bit more reliable than the plastic one that was on there and finally also ordered some new rollers as the uh, rollers that were on the x and y axis were quite worn out so just decided to replace those so yeah let's get all of these bits fitted and then hopefully that's the mechanical side done and then we're going to move on to the uh, main board and the electrics Right, so the printer's all back together, the mechanical side at least, and I've fitted the new parts. So here we have the new Bowden tube, and uh, we have the all-metal extruder, and I've also changed the rollers on the X and Y. Now the important thing you need to do on this is to uh, make sure these are not too tight, as otherwise this will wear these out quicker. And also that the other thing I had to do on here was to ensure um, that the gantry was all squared up as previously there was a gap on uh, these sides so I've made sure that these are all nicely aligned and then the other thing I've done is um, treat the uh, Z screws and the rods using this stuff which is a dry PTFE spray so hopefully that will um, reduce the frictions on those so right yeah next thing to do is to um, look at the main board and do the 32-bit upgrade Right, so here are the main electronics uh, of the printer. And obviously I've taken the panel off and you just need to be careful when you're removing this that you just disconnect the fan. So yeah, in here we've got the original power supply which looks like one of the early ones and not the mean wells that they, I think, are now fitting. So I'll have to keep an eye on this as there's been quite a few reports of these uh, failing. But the bit we're interested in here is the main control board. Now this is the... Uh, V2.2 board which is one of the early ones and obviously this is the non-silent one and it's an 8-bit board so what we're going to do is try and replace this with the 32-bit board which is recommended if you want to run Marlin 2. The other thing I want to try and do is keep the original touchscreen so rather than going with a alternative um, I think in most cases you have to replace the screen as well so what I'm thinking of doing is trying to see if we can get this running on the printer. Now this is the V427 board which goes into things like the Ender 3 and the 5 etc. I think this one actually has the uh, V2 software for the Ender 3 at the moment and we're going to flash this with some uh, custom firmware uh, based on Marlin 2 see if we can get it running on here. Now some of the things we're going to have to do obviously is uh, come up with a solution for the dual Z that's on here as obviously you've only got a single plug but uh, we should be able to drive both Z's off a single stepper motor because I think this is what this board is doing anyway and there's a couple of other modifications we need to do like the uh, connector for the BL touch and I think the LCD as well needs a slightly different setup to be able to work with this board but yeah I've seen some people doing it online so yeah I'm going to uh, figure that out and then come back once a uh, got the wiring sorted and then we can move on to uh, flashing the firmware. 
So in the end, I needed to create two connectors uh, for the new main board. The first one is the Dual Z, and uh, I've got a bunch of these JST connectors already, so I ended up uh, taking these two, sticking them together, and then soldering some wires on. Used a bit of hot glue just to protect this and to hold the wires in place, and then put a plug on the end, and basically that should do the job. Uh, you can buy these as well, but given I had the connectors, it was just easier just to fabricate this. And then for the touchscreen LCD, I ended up modifying the existing ribbon cable. Now, if you look at the main board, the direction that this plugs in is different um, than it is on the 427 board, meaning when it's plugged in this way, uh, some of these wires um, can be used. So if you can see here, uh, what was pin one and two on the original setup on this board is essentially reversed. So the brown and the, the red now make up the uh, five volt and the ground. Note that the brown is actually the five volt and the red is the ground. Uh, so yeah, don't pay attention to the colors. And then also the RX and TX pins on here, um, similar to how it was before, but it's obviously switched around and they go into the to the same pins. So yeah, let's get this fitted onto the new board and then go and have a look at the wiring on that. Right, so that's all the wiring done and connected to the main board. So let's just have a quick look at all the different connections that we've got here. So first up is the 24 volts that comes in from the power supply and that's pretty much the same as it was on the old board. Uh, if we come across to here, then the main fan for the hot end now goes into this terminal block, whereas it used to be plugged into the board on the old one. Uh, next to that, then we've got the heated bed control, which uh, again is similar to the old board. And then next to that is the heater for the hot end, which again is same connection as it was previously. If we move across to here, we've then got the uh, fan connector for uh, cooling down the plastic that's coming out the hot end. And then just below that, we've got the filament run-out sensor, which again, just plugs straight in. And then coming across to here, we've got the uh, stop switches for the X and the Y axis. And then as we come further along here, we've got the two uh, temperature sensors for the bed and the nozzle, just plugging into those two. Right, now, moving on to the BL Touch. Now, there on this board, there is a dedicated five pin connector but it is also possible to use the existing connectors that came on the old board. But there's a couple of important things you need to do here. Otherwise you could risk damaging uh, the new board. The first one is to do with this connector here. Now, on my original board, the ground and the five volt wires were the wrong way round. So essentially red was here on the right and then the ground was in the middle. And I had to swap those around and that's really important because otherwise you'll end up um, getting the wrong, wrong way around and that could damage the uh, main board apparently. And also uh, when I did actually try this I noticed that the BL Touch wasn't working properly and the two wires, the black and the white that go into the Z stop needed to be reversed. So as you can see here the black wire is now on the right whereas it was on the left before. So moving across here, we've got the, the ribbon cable now that just uh, plugs into that single connector. And as you can see, it just comes into the LCD. We'll just have a quick look. Uh, as you can see, the, the brown wire at the top is the five volt and the red is the ground. And the two in the middle are for the um, RX and TX connections. So similar to how it was before. And then finally, we've got the connections for the stepper motors. So the extruder on the left here is, is obviously the same. And then if we zoom out a bit, then we've got my dual Z adapter on here for the Z axis. And then finally, we've got these two for the X and the Y. So yeah, they're pretty much the same as they were on the old board. So I think all in all that covers it. So yeah, next job now is to uh, flash the firmware. And when we do that, we have to essentially flash the main board, but we also have to flash the firmware. So before we put all the cover back on, uh, we need to put the SD card in here and uh, flash the touchscreen so that it matches the 
version of Marlin that we're going to put onto the main board. So yeah, it's time to jump on the computer now and try and find some firmware that we can get to run on this thing. Right, so given now that we're running the V427 board inside the Ender 5 Plus, we're going to have to build a custom version of Marlin uh, in order to get the printer to work. So here we are on the main Marlin website and this allows you to basically download all the files you need and give you the information on how to build a version of Marlin yourself. So at the time of making this video the latest version is 2121 and if we click on the download link then uh, this allows you to download the stock version of Marlin uh, as a zip file which you can then extract locally and then compile it. Now in order to customize it for your printer you're going to need to override some of the configuration files that come with the stock version of Marlin and if you click on the configurations page and we click on the config folder and we click on examples and we scroll down to Creality and then carry on down to the bottom for the Ender 5 Plus we'll see some example configurations here now the one we're interested in for flashing the main board is the Creality V1 folder now this uh, essentially is for the 8-bit boards so we're going to have to make some modifications to this but this will give us a good place to start so what we're then going to do as well is download these files and then we're going to override the defaults that come with the stock version of Marlin. In order to build the version of Marlin uh, we come to the install section and then this goes through a couple of different options that you can do for building Marlin yourself. Uh, in this guide we're going to follow this first link here so install Marlin with platform IO and we're going to look at doing it using Visual Studio Code so if we click on this link this provides a number of steps in order to install Visual Studio Code platform IO and then compile the version of Marlin in order to get the the bin file that we can then use to flash the printer right so let's all get that set up and then jump into VS code and run through the steps you need to do to build Marlin so if you followed the guide on the Marlin website then you should get something like this when you open up Visual Studio code so as you can see here we've got the platform IO plugin and on the quick access section here we can click open project and we can go to the folder where we've extracted the Marlin source files in order to get them to appear here on the left hand side. Now the files that we're going to look to modify are the configuration.h and the configuration.advanced. So the versions I have here are my customized version that I've used in order to build a version that will work on the 427 boards and is also compatible with Marlin 2. Now in order to do that I went to a few different sources. So originally as I mentioned earlier I took the versions for the Creality V1 and then I also took some examples using the configuration files that are for the V427 board for the Ender 5 Pro. So if you click on here then there are some settings in here that we can look to copy over. And then finally I also found an archive that Creality provided which actually provides the original source code for the Ender 5 Plus which was Marlin 1.7.0.1. Now again we can use the configuration files that are in here and we can look to see what some of the original settings were that was on the earlier version of the firmware. In addition to this, this, this uh, archive also has a version of the touchscreen software. But given that this is not compatible with the version of Marlin we're trying to compile, we're going to uh, leave this for now and uh, we'll cover this a bit later on how we can update the firmware on the touchscreen in order to match the version of Marlin that we're trying to compile. So if we jump back into Visual Studio Code, then we just have to make one more change before we can build our version of Marlin. 
So if you click on the platform.io.ini file, then we just need to set the default environment to match the main board. So in this instance, we're going to set this to stm32f103re underscore creality. And this basically is the name of the microprocessor that is on the main board. So once you've done that, all you'll need to do then is come down here and hit the build button. And then hopefully after a few minutes, uh, you should end up with a bin file, which we can then use uh, to copy onto an SD card and insert that into the printer and then update the firmware. So next up, we need to flash the firmware that's on the touchscreen in order to get it to work with the new board and firmware that we've installed. So here we are back on the Marlin website. And again, we're gonna click on the download button, go to configurations, click on the config folder, choose examples, come down to Creality, find the end of five plus here at the bottom. And then we're gonna go into the Big Tree Tech SKR3 folder. And if we come all the way down here, there is a link to another GitHub repo, which we're gonna click on. And here, we're gonna download the latest release. So if we click on this link here, this takes us to a link to 102 and we're going to download this archive file here. So click on that and then we will download that locally. And then once that has downloaded, you can use a program like 7-Zip to extract this archive. And what you'll end up with is a folder that looks similar to this. Now, this folder essentially contains all the files that we're going to need to use to flash the touchscreen. And the way you flash the touchscreen is you copy this onto an SD card that is formatted to FAT32 with a default allocation size of 4096 bytes. Now that's important because otherwise the touchscreen might not read the SD card correctly. But if you've copied this folder onto the root of the SD card with no other files or directories and formatted it correctly, once the SD card's inserted into the touchscreen at the back, which we covered earlier in the video, when you power the printer on, you should see essentially a screen that goes through the update process where you see it copying all the files onto the touchscreen. And once that's done, you can power the printer off, remove the SD card, and then switch the printer back on again, which we'll do in a minute. And then hopefully both the touchscreen and the main board should now be updated. So yeah, let's go back to the printer now and have a look at the final result. Right, so with the printer now powered on, we can have a look at the new firmware. So as you can see, the, the home screen here looks pretty similar as it did in the previous version, where we have the print button that lets you pick the files that are on your SD card. And then we have the temperature section as we did before, but uh, we've got some presets now, like PETG, which I think have been added since the previous version. And then we still have the option to heat the nozzle in the bed up to whatever temperature we want and also to cool them down and then the options here for adjusting the fan speeds. If we then come over to the settings menu, uh, we've got the bed leveling, which lets you do the manual leveling at the five different points, which is quite handy. And then if we come to automatic, here we've now got 25 points that the BL Touch will use uh, in order to measure the points on the bed which gives you a much more accurate reading of how level your bed is. And then we still got the setting for applying the Z offset, which uh, in, you'll obviously need to do once you've updated the firmware. Um, we've also got the options as before, where you can uh, retract and extrude the filament. So if you need to change out the reel, you can do it via this menu. And also you can heat up the hot end to let the filament um, heat, heat up so it can be easily removed. And then we have the settings as we did before to allow you to move the X, Y and Z axis. Uh, another option here to disable the stepper motors. And then there's a new feature here which doesn't actually work at the moment, but I might fix this uh, later, where you can basically send GCO commands directly to the main board. But probably the biggest changes come in this section here, where you can now do things like PID tuning, which is uh, 
calibrating the temperatures on the nozzle and the bed and then there's a couple of other convenient options here like adjusting the volume which I don't think works on this particular touchscreen and also we can adjust the brightness and then there's two options here for resetting the EEPROM or the BL touch which again could be useful and finally if we come into the information page we can see here that we're running Marlin version 2121 which is great and that pretty much wraps up uh, some of the main changes that are in this version of the firmware so yeah to end the video we'll just have a look at some additional upgrades that I've done to the machine which will hopefully um, make this a reliable printer moving forward. So the first printable upgrade I did on this was the strain relief for the hot end and this just keeps all the cables nice and uh, supported uh, particularly this one here for the BL touch as you don't want to risk damaging the probe. So next up we have this which is a strain relief uh, for the cable that goes into the bed. Now th this was a problem as well on the Ender 5 Pro where this is basically just soldered onto the board and with this going up and down you don't want the risk of those joints breaking um, as there's quite a lot of power going through this. So yeah that's another good upgrade that I've done. Another little upgrade I did was just for this main cable, just uh, a support bracket just so that we can hold it onto the frame when this uh, is moving around just so it doesn't kind of go all over the place. So yeah, that, that should uh, come in quite handy too. And last but not least is the tool holder which I also have on my Ender 5 Pro which is just a really handy way of keeping all of these tools uh, on the machine just in case you need to use them. So yeah, all in all that wraps up the uh, repairs and upgrades that I've done to this Ender 5 Plus. So I'll put all the links to all the files and everything that I referenced in the video in the description and I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching.